Time to finish this interior refresh and go from this to this in under two hours and under a hundred bucks. You! So stoked. That's right, we're back at Talk Hub HQ with our free VY Storm Ute. And uh, while she's come a long way since we first got her, the filthy old girl, it's time to start looking at some of the things that we require for Roadworthy. And given that I don't have a hell of a lot of spare time this break, I'm gonna probably kick off with some of the low hanging fruit. I'm sure there's a bit of a pun there. So I guess first cab off the rank, I've mentioned it before, but this here ain't gonna fly. If you've got a Commodore of this era, you've probably seen the saggy roof lining and you may have copped a defect for it, or if you copped a defect for something else, that's something you've had to rectify. And today I'm gonna get stuck into it, redo it and uh, show you that it's actually not that difficult and it's probably not gonna cost as much as you think. So. I'm gonna stop jibber jabbering. Why don't you get stuck straight into it? Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. For some reason, they used Torx bits only on the sun visors. Phillips had everywhere else. Torx bit TX15 on there. Seems silly. And there you go, no sooner than I got in the car, one screwdriver, one torque spit, and 10 minutes and she's out. Here it is, the old roof lining, and she's looking a little bit worse for wear. I might have been rubbing his head on it, and as you can see, it's pretty much totally separated, more or less the whole way through. Now, from here, it's pretty easy to peel off. And from here, you can kind of see why it does it when it sags. So between sitting out in the heat, if you've ever seen foam sitting out in the sun for a long time, you know that it goes real nasty and just starts to lose itself. But also, I'm sure you've all seen the TV ads where they suck a cigarette through a uh, cotton wool ball or whatever. This is no different. When you blow the smoke out in your car, it gets into the foam and it starts to break down the foam just like it does your lungs, I guess. I'm not preaching, I don't hate on non-smokers, you do you boo, but just know that if you're smoking in your car, chances are you're causing this issue. So you can see here I've got some new fabric and this is actually a perfect match to the factory one. Um, for a ute, 
you're probably only because this is a 1.5 meter wide roll you're probably only going to need about a meter in order to cover that one if you've got a sedan you're probably going to need about two meters worth of material and if you've got a wagon you're probably going to want about three maybe a touch more um, you can go to your local trimmer like i did or there's plenty of vendors on ebay or amazon or whatever you can get similar materials and you don't have to use this stuff the reason why this stuff has this foam in the middle is um it helps with acoustics in the car obviously the roof skin can be like a bit of a drum and it vibrates and it can be very noisy so on the bottom of the liner you've got this foam which will help with acoustics as well but then this foam in the roof lining also helps with acoustics in the car when you're talking just makes it a little bit quieter a little bit nicer driving experience but i've seen people use marine carpet um, like subwoofer box carpet one of those car mats that you had when you were a kid you know the one you know the one i'm talking about you can put that on there you can put whatever you want in there flano whatever but in the sake of cheap and cheerful quick and easy we're just going to go like for like now a lot of you guys have said in previous video like wow, you guys should put a black roof liner in it it would look way cooler and yeah sure it would look cool if this was a vz and it had a black dash um it would probably look better but this ha does have a gray dash and if i was to do it then i'd also have to color match the b pillar trims the sun visor the handles it you know we got this ute for free we're trying to to make this nice and relatable for all you guys, we're doing this as cheap and as cheerful as possible. The fabric you can get on, uh, as I said, eBay, Amazon, or you can go to your trimmers, probably looking at about $65 a meter. And then if you've got a compressor and a glue pot at home, sweet, you can use that. But otherwise, I am gonna be using some of this gear here, which I got from my local trimmers. So it's basically just a spray on, aerosol adhesive you spray it on the liner and the carpet let it tack off for a bit stick them together and away you go but before i do that i need to get rid of all of this nasty foam otherwise nothing will stick Pins left in there, ow. There you go, another quick and easy job, but you do have to make sure that you are pretty thorough with it. Like I said before, if there is any of that nasty foam still left on there, then you're gonna mess with your adhesion. So make sure you take the time, scrape all of it off. It's not real hard. Um, and then you'll get a good result. It's kind of like a thin sort of fiberglass, cardboardy type of material sort of setup. I just used one of these soft bristle brushes that i mean use them on a drill like detailing carpet or whatever i just did it by hand just give it a chuk, 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 and then that uh dragged most of it up and then i just finished it off with a normal soft banister brush just to brush the last bits off so as you can see i've now got my carpet laid down on there make sure that you lay it the right way down this is the side you want the glue on not that side ask me how i know you need to double check these things so I have done a roof lining before and I did put the glue on the wrong side and I had to buy a new cup. But yeah, so now I'm just going to spray uh, this Forsch adhesive. Uh, where's the part number for it? There you go, K146. I think you can get them for about, about 25 bucks for a can, something like that. Um, spray it on the headliner, pull that away, spray it on the, um, on the material let it tack off and then we'll uh, lay it on there.
Let me tell you, that glue does not play around. I had all kinds of like plans on, oh yeah, I'll be able to film it like this, and I'll be able to get this angle and that angle, but dude, once you stick that carpet on, that's it. It has got gorilla grip. It is not letting go, and you need to work fast. <laughs> so you got that Porsche K146. Not sponsored, never used it before, but my goodness. Oops, <laughs> sorry. And there you go, there is the finished item. Just got to make sure that you press real nice in here so you can get those lines in there cut your holes so that you don't have to do it when it's in the car and uh yeah it's as simple as that like i was saying before though that spray on adhesive is wild stuff um it comes out looking a little bit like <laughs> Donut glazing um, and look I'm not a trimmer I'm not a seamstress or what would a male seamstress be a seaman no that doesn't sound right I don't do this for a living I have done it before though and I'm pretty happy with the result it's um it's got that sort of factory plush nice squishy feel um, like I say it was a direct match for the factory material that was on there so when you uh, do it though, if you've got these like curvy contoured edges, just cut a couple of slits in there and that helps you pull it over in those corners and keep a nice sort of tight radius through there. So that's nice and tight on the mold, exactly how you like it. But otherwise that's exactly how you want it guys. Um, don't do what I did, don't rub your dirty hands all over it too much. Wear gloves when you're doing the glue or Otherwise, just use a little bit of off-cut material or something for when you're pushing around because otherwise you'll end up with a slightly dirty mark up there, but I'll be able to clean that off. But now, I was ready to go back in the car. Put that in upside down, you dickhead. Unbelievable. How did I even do that? What a muppet.
Ta da! Nice. Well, there you have it. Look at that. Another job done. And what a massive improvement it is on the old one. Like, don't have to worry about rubbing my head on the headlining anymore <laughs> or pins dropping out. Um, I had once when I jumped in the car and a pin had dropped out of the headlining, it was sitting on the seat and it stabbed me in the ass. Not ideal, I can tell you that. Super happy with that. Like I say, it's not black. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to do a black one, um, but honestly, that doesn't look too bad. It looks factory, which is kind of what we're after. You gotta remember the whole theme of this is we're gonna do it cheap and cheerful. We're gonna get this thing to make some power at some point. Don't know how, but we'll make it happen. But for now, we just gotta keep concentrating on getting this thing roadworthy and ready for registration. So, cost, as for cost, I've seen people quoted $350, $400 to do their roof lining. Um, obviously, a sedan's probably gonna be a little bit more than a ute because you're gonna need that bit of extra material, but I've managed to do this for under 100 bucks. Um, if you were to get two cans of that glue, which I think you can get for about $45 on eBay from memory, um, which would do a sedan. I used just over one can and I laid it on pretty thick. So I think you could definitely get away with it um, with two cans for doing a sedan. Two meters of carpet at say 60 bucks a meter. There you go, 180 bucks and you're well on your way there. So well worth doing yourself guys not super hard the hardest thing difference between a ute and a sedan is getting the headlining out you do have to give the headlining a bit of a twist and pull it out the door that way with a the sedan these ones are fairly short so they just come straight out nice and easy don't hesitate to give it a crack guys because it is really really simple one last look look at that i'll tell you what You've got to admit that this busted ass ute has come a long way in a short period of time already and there's still plenty more to do. You've got an exciting future ahead of you, old girl. Just want to say thanks to all you guys who watched the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you subscribe. Don't miss another episode because we've got some awesome stuff on the way. More episodes on Kurt's Turbo VR BT1. We're going to get this thing up in the air and get it ready for rego. And we'll also give you some more updates on my VH as well as another project coming into the shed very soon. Something pretty exciting, something JDM, something a little bit different. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Won't drag this one out too far. Catch you on the next one. Cheers.